this is coming from the mouth of a woman who started as children's theater, right? Then was the first woman to run the Playhouse, first woman artistic director. Then was a woman, first woman running the National Theater School. So, Joy, it's a bit ironic, isn't it? You seem you I don't know. It's broke my life. many barriers being a woman taking over these. No, I think in retrospect, when you read it and say those things, it's it, it break his barrier. But when I was actually doing it, there were barriers weren't being broken. I don't think one doesn't think in history, you know, like in, in retrospect. Uh, no, it was the no. It was the thing that had to be done next. It sat there and said, "This has to be done. There's a problem here." And you may, in, and you look around each time. I swear, and maybe you do this too. You look around and you think, "I'm not the right person for this." And I would say that, "No, no, I, I, I I'm not qualified for this." And they'd say, T "Name me two other people." And you'd look around and you'd think, "No, I guess I'm as qualified as anyone I can think of, actually." So that's no excuse. And who knows? Maybe we'll discover something new. And I'm not afraid. I like it. You know. Are you afraid? No. I'm, 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 on, on those occasions. Oh, of course I'm afraid. When, 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 when I go on. When you were building right? You, you were one of the prime movers. No, I wasn't afraid there. I knew it had to be done. I think my, my whole, and it's not because of aging, it's because I observe that the whole world is going to be old at the same time, about 20 years from now. Like whole world, not just Canada, not just North America. And nobody's preparing for it. And what we're doing with old people in the meantime, that are our fathers and mothers, is we're putting them in places where they give them drugs and put them in front of a television set and they sit there. They, their lives are not adding up to it. If we don't start and make the senior mind and wisdom use its creativity to, and it's got to be creative work. I mean, what if you, what if you um, spent, you, if you, you know you're going to live till you're 80, it's not 75 anymore, it's not even 80, it's getting to be 90, everybody's going to live till 90. So you better be preparing for when you are 70, or maybe a bit older than that, to be able to explore all the creative options you haven't touched in your lifetime. And you've been pretty lucky because you've been in the theater, so a lot, a lot of stuff has been developed. And um, you won't always be able to act. That's the toughest one. But there's all kinds of other things. Mm -hmm. And unless we develop old people, senior people, who are going to be um, being creative in their answers about what's going to happen to human beings in an aging society. We're so far behind on that, that when it came to this, it was, I should have done it 10 years earlier. It is, I mean, one of my favorite groups in Canada is the Raging Grannies, because it's total honesty and activism and improvisation and creativity, and they're from grandmothers, you know, the, the mothers of the plaza in, in Argentina. Right, the mothers who turned the junta around are, are heroes of mine because they are the old oh, woman too. who yeah. said, I will not stand for injustice and I will be here. So yes. when you talk about this generation saying, in our 70s, we will do these things. But the Raging Grannies, my experience with the Raging Grannies is that uh, it wasn't the first group, but it was pretty close to that. I, they asked me to come in and direct them uh, because I was a woman I was directing and I, was, I wasn't a granny yet. But. They said, uh, so I started to clean up some of those songs so that instead of everybody having a fancier hat than anyone else and everybody doing their own gestures to what I, I got them doing it all at the same time so the message was clear because the message is not clear when you see it. You think, oh, how cute they are. Oh, bless those dear old grannies, you know. But the message is important. And I convinced them maybe for about a week and a half and then threw it all out and did what they wanted to do. Bless them. But it was a, tr it was a struggle because the, their lyrics were good and, their, and the fervor behind it was good. But, you know, if you use the same gesture over and over, after a while it's meaningless. And if you're all doing different stuff, 
you see those shows on um, PBS where they get the old uh, uh, the, the ink spots and the four this is and the five that's doing their old songs and they have a whole and there's always one man in the middle of the quartet that wants to do the gestures and they, they never did that when they were younger. They sang the song and they sang but I was watching the other night and it's where I'm going all the things he always wanted to do with that song. So you think there's an untapped creativity in coming in the 70s generation, those of us who will be in our 70s at some point, that that is better a, be. a creative opportunity rather than sitting in our rockers and watching... They be there better be, because otherwise, who's going to do what has to be done? There better be. But we've never had arts done by the 70-year-olds. No, and we don't put any, we don't put any money into it. We don't... You know, I, I started, the last group I started was Western Gold, which was actors over 60, I thought. And how was that 60. going? And it, uh, we did, first of all, we did Midsummer Night's Dream. And every actor has to be 60 They were old 60 and over, and the, the, the woman who inspired us to do this place, whose death inspired us to do this place, uh, she was in it. She played um, Helena, Hermia. And Helena was that wonderful actress from Winnipeg. It was a national company. Barry was in it, playing bottom. And uh, uh, yeah, so we started with that. We proved it could be done, that people would forget in the first five minutes that these people were 60 and think they were whatever age they wanted them to be. It was wonderful. And it lasted for me uh, until I had the open heart surgery, when my heart started to pack up. And, and it... Uh, three friends of mine I went to to see if they would be artistic directors and they all said no and then they all got together and decided they would run it together and they have been doing it for I guess 12 years or I don't know quite a long time and they've all quit suddenly and the, the theater board here play uh, um, pal theater board has sort of adopted western gold they sort of they, they've almost got their wings around it kind of thing because it has a number and it has a bit of money and but there's but nobody this, that wants to run it this is the sharp point of your idea though i mean the creativity of those who will be in their 70s this is this yeah. company but i've got a whole building of people here now you see here's pal which is the perfect place to experiment right but there's not many actors in pal right and there's only maybe of the 110 that are professional actors and have been all their lives. Uh, <laughs> but you do know that every costume person, and actually probably everyone behind a camera, has watched actors all their lives, has taken pictures of them, put wigs on them, and known that if they ever got the chance to do it, they could be as good as that fellow or that woman that's up there. So they get in, pal, oh, they all want to act. 